Hi guys, Quinn's Ideas here and I'm back with some more Dune news. So a few people have wanted me to talk about this. A while ago we mentioned that some test screenings have been shown and people were very excited about the footage that they had been shown. Now, as it turns out, two people that saw the movie at the test screening have been interviewed and they gave their opinions about the movie. Now this is coming from Everyday Dune on Twitter. Now, apparently, there were two different people, as I said, one of them was completely unfamiliar with the Dune universe, and the second person was also completely unfamiliar when they saw the movie, but they read the book after seeing the movie, and the interview was taken, of course, after they read the book. So there is a lot of good info here, and we're going to go through it right now. So, they asked them a bunch of general questions. The first general question was whether or not they actually liked the film. Person 1 replied that they loved it and that it also seemed like a perfect movie. They did not like it equally as much as Blade Runner 2049, but they gave it a very positive score, 9 out of 10. Now, right off the bat, that is excellent. Um, a perfect movie is pretty much what the expectations are at this point for Denis Villeneuve's Dune movie. We all know about the love and passion that went into this movie, so it's good to see this person confirm this. Person 2 actually went on to compare this movie to The Fellowship of the Ring, calling it an experience. They said they liked it more than Blade Runner 2049, which had previously been their favorite movie. They rated it 10 out of 10. That is super, super exciting. The comparison, of course, to The Fellowship of the Ring, Lord of the Rings is one of the greatest trilogies of all time, if not just the greatest trilogy of all time, period. So that is high praise. They also asked them about complaints for the film. Person 1 had a complaint and said there was too much information in some scenes. However, they did reaffirm that it did not ruin their enjoyment for the movie. Now, I totally understand how a film adaptation of Dune might have a lot going on in one scene. There is a lot going on in this universe. It's a huge universe with many different factions. The Bene Gesserit, the Guild, the Ixians, the Tleilaxu, Chome, the Lanzarad. So much going on, so much intertangled, so I can see how that might be overwhelming at times, but I am definitely looking forward to see how Denis Villeneuve approaches it, and apparently it's done well enough to it doesn't ruin this person's enjoyment, so that's very, very good news. Person 1 was especially positive um, about the movie's cinematography, saying that the movie is not as dull looking as they expected it to be from all the images and the trailer that had been out so far. And they said it, the images and trailers don't do justice to the film. Now that's great to hear because I, I, I expected that Denis Villeneuve would show us some things in the trailer but leave certain things for surprise. I don't want to see everything in the trailer, I want to go into certain things and be surprised by how they look. But it's excellent to know that we get to see more of the universe in the movie, as to be expected. Next, they were asked about the cast. Person 1 loved David Desmokian as Peter DeVries. They commented that they specifically loved his look throughout the film. When I first heard that Peter DeVries was being cast as this guy, I immediately thought he had the right look, he has the right face, he's got the right body type, and I could totally see him playing it, so it's really cool to know that he did a good job. Person 1 also said they were very happy with Jason Momoa's performance, as well as Oscar Isaac's performance as the Duke Leto. They also commented that Stellan Skarsgård was pretty intimidating as the Baron Harkonnen, and they said something about the deepness in Stellan Skarsgård's voice that is very frightening, and they compared it to Snoke from the Disney Star Wars movies. Now this is really great to hear because I don't really feel like the Baron has ever been portrayed accurately. I don't think that the David Lynch Baron was very good at all. He was a little bit too goofy, and the miniseries Baron was okay, but not necessarily scary, and it's cool here that we get to see Baron actually be terrifying and menacing, and I never doubt it at all that Stellan Skarsgård could pull it off. Person 2 also comments that Leto is very good in this movie, Oscar Isaac's acting is very good here, and they comment that people may have not seen him act in a role like this if they've only watched the Star Wars movies and they just comment that he gives a very great performance, which is to be expected. Oscar Isaac is a fantastic actor. 
Uh, I always point to the movie Ex Machina. He's fantastic in that film. And the look of him as Duke Leto, I know, is just phenomenal. Just looking at everything, he totally fits the role, in my opinion. They also comment that there are plenty of scenes between Paul and Leto, and scenes that show why Leto is a good person and why the Atreides are so beloved. Person 2, however, commented that Gurney Halleck they thought was the weakest character of the bunch. I guess we'll just have to wait that one out and see if we all agree with that. They don't say much about the visual effects and the music, but we can expect it to be just as great as we can expect it to be. Um, it's Hans Zimmer, so he is a master, and of course the visual effects look phenomenal in the trailer and we don't expect anything less than pristine. They also comment on the length of the movie, saying that it's around 2 hours and 15 minutes, which, yeah, is pretty short considering what we all were kind of expecting. I said that I thought the movie should be around 3 hours, but they say that it's really well paced at 2 hours and 15 minutes, so I guess we'll all just have to see what it's like when it comes out. Now, there is a discrepancy between these two interviews. It seems that these two people saw two different cuts. So the movies end at different times for both people. One person said that the movie ended right after Paul's fight with Jamis, and that they thought the ending was kind of anticlimactic. And the other person said the film ended after Jessica's awakening. When Jessica drinks the water of life and awakens her genetic memory and also awakens the child within. They also say that neither Fade Ratha Harkonnen or the Emperor Shadow Carino appear in this movie. So it seems that if these interviews are 100% accurate, they are saving Fade Ratha and the Emperor for the second movie, which is an interesting decision. The Arakeen dinner scene from the book is also not in this movie. We also learned from this interview that the Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohayim is actually narrating the intro of the movie, and we get a look at the Spacing Guild and the human navigators and their tanks. So that's really cool to know that we get to see the navigators because I, I definitely want to see what Denny Villeneuve's interpretation of them is. David Lynch did the big giant vagina mouth creature that was just really, really weird looking. Not exactly the book version. And of course the miniseries one was just really, really terrible CGI. So I'm very, very excited to see the modern Denny Villeneuve interpretation of a guild navigator, someone that's been evolved by the spice uh, so that they can live in tanks and navigate ships through outer space. It's also confirmed by these interviews that though the Baron does hover somewhat, he does not float around and fly around like the Baron in previous movies and miniseries. That's very exciting to me because the Baron doesn't really float and fly. He, he hovers slightly. He's light because of suspensors that keep up his fat. He does not fly around like a goofy villain. So I'm excited about that and I'm happy that they did it that way. And they also said his design was incredible. It also says in these interviews that we apparently get to know the Beast Reborn in this movie before we get to know the Baron. So the Beast Reborn is the sort of the main antagonist for the first part of the movie, and he's kind of quote unquote wrecking shit. So that's cool that we we see Reborn and we build him up before we actually are introduced to the even worse guy, the Baron Harkonnen. I think that's probably a very effective way to do it, and I commend Denis Villeneuve for doing it that way. Because you know it kind of builds the tension. When will we see Vladimir Harkonnen? When will he appear? And if the beast is this bad, how bad is his uncle? So <laughs> that's exciting to hear. There's also a note about a minor character, a soldier that has a rather big role for a simple soldier. So it might have something to do with the sequel, the second half. So it's maybe a character that's not in the book, a soldier that's being on Gidi Prime as a slave, so that's very, very interesting. That's definitely different from the book, right? We know Duncan Idaho was a slave of the Harkonnens on Gidi Prime, so maybe that ties into his story some way? I guess we'll have to see. That's exciting to hear, though. And that is all the information that we got from these interviews. That is so freaking exciting to read. Now, Everyday Dune warns us to take this with a grain of salt. The movies can still change and also take these interviews with a grain of salt. They seem legit, the source seems legit, but of course, anything can be faked on the internet, of course, but it seems legit. I am looking forward to Denis Villeneuve's Dune more so than any film that I've looked forward to for a really, really, really long time. 
Dune is my favorite science fiction book series. I've been making videos on Dune for years, I've dedicated my channel to making Dune videos, I absolutely love it. And Denis Villeneuve, as I've said since it was first announced that he would be on this project, is the absolute best director that could ever possibly be working on this movie. And I am so excited to finally see this movie on the big screen later this year. It is going to happen. I know it seems like the production of Dune is kind of cursed. You got David Lynch's Dune, which had kind of a production hell and then flopped. Then we got the sci-fi Dunes that kind of went through nightmarish things. And then even before all of that, Joe Dorowski's Dune that was kind of seemed like it was going to have this big thing, but then kind of just fizzled out. So it seems like Dune can never get made. Dune can never come out. But Denis Villeneuve's movie is made, and I know that it will come out, and unless I die in some freak accident or the world gets hit by an asteroid or something, I will be seeing this movie in October, and I hope that you will too, and together, we all as the fandom can make this movie a success and turn this movie into the next big thing. Let's make Dune the sci-fi version of Lord of the Rings. Can we do it? I think we can. Thank you guys so much, and make sure you like and subscribe for more Quinn's ideas, and check out the Dune playlist on this channel for all your Dune lore needs.